Hello, good evening, good morning, and good afternoon to those watching us. So once again, we meet here for the program of the land series. And today we have here in the studio with us, our dear friend, Faye Waddington. Hello, Faye. Hello, Renee. It's How a are you? to be here. Thank you. I'm Good. fine. Thank it's a you pleasure to have you here today. My pleasure. We apologize for last Sunday. We had some technical problems. <laughs> and um, here we are today. So, Faye will be talking to us today about the work of the LEARN, research about mediumship. It's a very interesting book. And then, Faye, we give you an idea of the, um, the topic that... Um, um, the learn deals in this book. It's another very interesting book by by him. Oh, yes. So I'll briefly introduce Faye, just say a few words. Um, Faye Waddington, she grew intensely attracted by the feeling of spirituality. And this is something that I felt just like you, you know, attracted towards spirituality and it's very interesting because this guides us in life to search for enlightenment and knowledge as well and sacredness as well in general so as a child she uh, used to play with children whose address her mom could never identify in a small area where they they lived uh, and also she was under emotional pressure because she attended a religious school and that was giving her suicidal thoughts. So she got tired of that. She preferred to go into arts um, in, in the, uh, look for more spiritual grow, growth in, in you know, other, other places. So she visited and studied at several places like, for instance, the Theosophical Society, and also Seisho uh, Noye, where she could actually feed from the spirituality. But then she finally went to the Spiritist Federation of the State of Sao Paulo, where she joined a mediums school. Unfortunately, she says that she couldn't finish that, but she uh, started working and studying, and that has never stopped. So she was invited to do some, some work, charitable work, in the little child's home, O Pequeno Lar da Criança, in Portuguese, uh, a spiritist-run nursery. They had become a school and a charity. So um, she worked there for years with a team of painters and musicians to provide healing. And this is very interesting, because art, art provides healing to people in its many forms, and also to raise funds for the orphanage and the nursery. So she, she also used to perform with this group uh, at other centers and hospitals to support their project. So uh, in her work in aviation, she met other mediums, and they quietly tried to make the difference in the work environment. So back in the UK, she met Janet Duncan, and then she also met Elsa Rossi, who helped her to be closer and more involved with the British Union of Spiritist Society. And um, she has since helped with translations, book revisions, video subtitling, and also joining groups and giving her participation in many groups. So Faye is now very active in spiritism, and she gives her contribution to many programs and um, you know she, she's got also for instance time to talk and other programs where she you know is actively participating so Faye I've talked too much now <laughs> welcome again good to have mm -hmm. you here and um, I'll hand it over to you now Faye thank you thank you Nina. well um, I'm going to try this is a first subject in a vast book it's of course a really hefty book but wonderful you know it's really wonderful and what i'm trying to do is um i've put the three <laughs> titles or the, the original Hershey's um uh, apologies for for all the accents they're missing there um 
because to do in order to do this, um, I chose to read as much as I could the book in its original version in French. Then, uh, because I'm not absolutely fluent by that, I read the translation, the official translation in Portuguese. And I was trying to do that to express <laughs> my findings and the ideas in English. So please bear with me if, if it gets um, uh, a bit confusing at some points, that's why, because there are three languages working there. But while doing that, I carried on with, a, with an old habit of uh, reading around the book, listening to talks, to, to seminars, to lessons from all sorts of people, especially scientists, because I like science a lot. Uh, I have no, no um, background as such, not nowhere near like Munir and many of our other friends. It's just that I like it very much. And um, uh, so from that, I took a few notes that I thought would, uh, from contemporary uh, thinkers and professors, that made um, Gabriel Delan's uh, uh, thoughts, you know, just straight away. All right, so I added, there is, I think the next slide is just a cover of the, the, the first editions or the very first editions of this monumental work that uh, I would invite everyone who's, uh, so even a slightly inclined to know more about uh, mediumship, to um, take some time and read it. Uh, it's not something that you're going to read quickly, but it's something that you read along the time because it's so rich with um, uh, cases, study cases and examples that uh, I'm sure everyone's going to find something to get really hooked on it. Okay, so my first quote, the one that I found, is this. And it says, science can sometimes sound arrogant and sometimes sounds like it's the discipline that's saying why you're not right. Okay, we're always wrong. And that's from Professor Brian Cox, an astrophysicist, an English astrophysicist. And he said, it's not the discipline saying that you're not right. It's saying what we found out. So everything that's being said is something that we've discovered. It's not stuff that someone made up. All we know comes from direct observation. And I think we should be humble when talking about science. So that is, um, that resonated um, um, so strongly because that was, to me, uh, exactly the thought of um, uh, Gabriel Delan in his work. He wanted to run this um, research, apologies for <laughs> the comment. Um, and um, this, uh, he wanted to do it in, a, in the most scientific procedure that they had uh, and, and with um, the, the highest neutrality in the sense that it didn't matter what he believed personally. What he made it very clear is that he wanted to uh, pursue a, a topic to prove what uh, mediumship was not before he said what it is. So, um, of course, he had his own uh, ideas, but um, so then he started his the, the, the book, his introduction is really striking because he starts with a, a question. It, 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 it looks like a rhetorical question, but it isn't. Uh, I think it's the, the next one, please. Look. And it says, what is spiritism? To the scholars, 
it's a superstition of the populace. So the Catholic and Protestant clergy is a demonic practice. And he was very open about it. He, he, he knew who he was uh, addressing his ideas, his work to. And uh, because he thought that at that point, and, and that was, he was writing in the year 1900. And if you think that the, um, uh, all the literature, the spiritist literature, see very serious books from Kardec until his time uh, have been published and there was so much information and still at that time it was frustrating to think that the idea of spiritism up to them up to then uh, was pretty much uh, about dancing tables and knocking doors and all that sort of uh, um, uh, extraordinary um, um, phenomena okay but not no one really delving into what it meant so uh his introduction to the next one please in his uh yeah so that's it he thought that um um he not only uh, read he praised and he absolutely was devoted to the ideas, to the, to the classic, to the pure spiritist teachings. But he was, um, um, he checked. And he said, why, why are there so many distortions? Why, why are people coming up with some exotic ideas about what it is and what it isn't? Um, have they not read the the, the, the spirit's book, for example. Had they not read the medium's book, especially in this case? And he found out that uh, he checked with colleagues and friends uh, uh, in many countries, and he felt, well, look, the teachings that people get, receive in every single country are exactly the same, are precisely the same. So what's wrong? What's the problem? Why are there misconceptions about what mediumship uh, is and it, in the end what spiritism is? It, his conclusion was, well, um, the people don't read it. They're not, they're not studying hard enough or they're not reading it, the books often enough. But that still wasn't enough, uh, enough reason to uh, to bring a scientific proof to anything. So he had to devise a process of um, developing a, a, this very encompassing research. He had doubts. He had, he knew his, his, um, the, the criticals and, and he, the, um, the opponents were wrong. So he had to prove, say why they were wrong. So it's just like in the first quote, it's not just saying you're wrong, you have to say why and give enough evidence to, to prove that hypothesis. Yeah. So in his, um, I think it's the, the next one, please. Then he has his, the, um, what you, his aim was to use scientific methodology to study mediumship uh, in general, but with an, because it's such a broad subject, he, he, he focused, his emphasis was in automatic writing of hysterics, which is an old fashioned word for the, the, the patients in hospitals who had um, neurological or psycho neurological, psychological, um, that was the word, it's not disease, it's a, uh, I'll find a word in a minute. But anyway, it's people who were being treated for, for um, disorders, that's, that's what I want, for neurological, psychological, and psychophysiological 
disorders. Um, then that opposed to the mechanical writing on mediums. And then, and once he's done, he had done that, then he thought he could bring the absolute proof of communication with the world of spirits. That was it. Um, so then, to the next one, please. And that's what he said, that, that there's a profusion, profusion of automatic phenomena. And what matters is that the true spiritist communications are not left any longer without the credit of science. So again, it's not a matter of belief as such. It's not a matter of faith, but it's a matter of analyzing facts and measuring facts, facts and measurements, which is it's a huge task, isn't it? So next, please. It says the, the spiritist phenomena and the automatic writing of hysterics and patients in, in hospitals. Um, spiritism is a science of observation and of research moving from empiricism to science. So because he felt that every, all the criticism that he got and all, and all the theories that were becoming more prevalent at his time, which were distorting the, the, the ideas and the studies in spiritism, uh, the technical studies there, um, did not, uh, they were not results of uh, thorough investigations. And, um, and for example, there was a lot of theory, there was a lot of speaking, but not so much of doing or carrying things out. And uh, uh, when they talk about why is this emphasis on hysterics, uh, on, on the people with disorders? Because these were the people who were observed the most. And uh, it's a well, that's all right. So you, you can, you, you will observe a certain uh, kind of um, phenomena in some a certain kind of people, but uh, or, hello, uh, I don't know, something has happened here. And, all right, I'm sorry. Hey, go well. <laughs> I was in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so it's, it's either the observation of those people who were not fully aware of what they were doing, and that's what he found out. They were not fully aware. Or the, the mediums that were observed and studied in general before his research were usually upper class, middle class, upper class people, so very well educated people, people who, who uh, um, could speak several languages, were, had an extensive experience of traveling, of uh, social uh, interaction. So there were two extremes that uh, were not represented to fully representative of the whole spectrum of people who uh, offered, who demonstrated um, consistent mediumistic um, behavior and phenomena. So it says, no, this, this, uh, this research is flawed because it's afraid it is afraid, it's not a matter of uh, being unable to. No, it's afraid of facing the truth that is happens in a much broader spectrum than just these two extremes. Yeah. And the next one, please. Uh, then he says about the... Uh, influence of um, spirits and people, I have to see. Again, 
the, the thing was, was, was that he, he wanted to see in those phenomena that uh, people claimed to be either um, fake or uh, incredibly supernatural medium mystic psychic abilities or skills, uh, he had to prove on top of all that, he had to prove what was and what wasn't the influence of spirits on the person. And leading to say that um, because he could, they could see people who were illiterate receiving or taking messages, writing messages, and languages that they couldn't possibly know, in topics that they couldn't possibly know because they hadn't studied, they were illiterate. Uh, mediums uh, bringing messages about facts and things happening at a distance. Um, so there was a, 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 a huge number and, and also expressing a personality that wasn't theirs. They said, well, you know, how can this be made up? But again, they said, well, I believe, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the, there is a, 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 an interaction, an influence of the spirits. But I'm not going to give you guys any spoilers. I suggest you go there <laughs> because there is a huge list of cases fully and well documented in detail even the conversations and the dialogues um, saying that how on one hand the hysterics uh, were um, led to a, a sort of a sonamb sonambulism or, or um, a, a trance induced trance uh, almost like um, um, hypnotism coming out of hypnotism and then they could do things because they had been hypnotized or close to that so and they had no idea of what was going on they had no idea of what they uh, or members of what they were writing when on the other hand the the true the mediums were fully aware they were healthy they're in full health. They were fully aware of what was happening. Um, so they, they were in control in a way, in a way they were in control, even though they were, they had a muscular and nervous control, even though they were, um, people think would say that, uh, when when a, a medium is writing, for example, that, that there's no control. That's not true. The medium has to be fit and prepared well enough to be aware, to know that the arm and, arm and hand are doing involuntary movement, but you follow the involuntary. It's, it's a very crazy thing. You follow the, the involuntary movement knowing it's happening it, it's um it's an interaction it's a very close very delicate interaction but it's not as if the medium couldn't do anything if he wanted to stop he could you know he's not completely subject to anything yes um so next one please and yeah, so just just going back to what he said to to confirm to say uh, where he the the research was run in many countries in many places, and it was important to know that the information they all had was exactly the same, and. Um, that the mediums could be uh, also uh, working to answer questions whether or not they would be aware of the question, that wasn't the point. But the information was there and probably 
uh, so if people don't know them well, that was from not reading the masters often enough. Uh, next one, I don't know if I'm ahead of, or behind. Right, where am I? Um, I think this is just um, uh, recapping what um, I said. about the, the, the different skills and the aptitudes. And he says, combining electricity and energy. Who said that more later? Tesla, didn't he? Didn't he say the universe is energy and electricity, etc., etc. So they were very, he was so much in tune with so many, with so many serious researchers. So, um, Combining electricity and energy, the mediums will, the mediums will, and the mediums discipline and commitment, different kinds of writing or communications can take place with or without the mediums, other abilities to connect and sense the environment. And automatic writing, direct writing. And so, Again, he puts, it's important in this phenomenon that there is the medium's will. So he accepts to do it. He accepts the task. And he commits to it. So being able is not enough. Wanting to do it is just not enough without the commitment. And the combination of that the, the, the development of this discipline will lead to, to the different phenomena. So there is an awareness and that's important. And he talks about the different kinds of writing, uh, direct inspired uh, writing, precipitated. So higher and lesser levels of interference of the medium's will. Uh, in this, am I, am I correct to say that? My name? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then from writing, writing is, is one thing, but, but it could it could be um, a drawing, could be painting, could be anything, because all the expressions of what um, a spirit, which was a person, used to do, in his materialized life, incarnated life, he could still carry on doing after the, the, his uh, physical body was gone, was dead. But the person, the abilities and his knowledge were still there. So now what he needed to express that was this close and delicate um, interaction, interface with the medium. Yeah, um, and I put this is a very long uh, chapter, and I found this this um, repeating what, in his own experience, this professor Hislop said, repeating uh, Delan's conclusion. So, in his own experience, this professor said, "I've been talking to my dead father, my brother, my uncles." Whatever supernatural powers we may be pleased to attribute to the medium, Mrs. Piper's secondary personalities, it would be difficult to make me believe that these secondary personalities could have thus completely reconstituted the mental personality of my relatives. Again, Delane found out, so that uh, uh, one of the theories was that, oh, well, this is not, what's happening is not an interference of, uh, of the spirit, but it's probably a latent subconscious knowledge that's coming uh, to surface uh, on, on that medium. 
or then it's a it's a split personality so in his everyday life mrs piper would be behaving in one way but then another part of her personality would surface and she would start writing this is how about the personality of the person of the message in the message or in the communication that i receive yeah what what do you say about that the next one please right that's led me to my, my second quote was that uh, there is something that's by Einstein he said there's something invisible that I cannot see like the magnetic field attracting a compass needle to point to north this was something that intrigued him as, as a boy when he was given a compass he said okay it's moving obviously there must, something is making it move it's not magic and it says, if you look at nature carefully and really um, pay attention, and if you're lucky, you can catch a glimpse of something deeply hidden. I believe, this is my take, that that is one of the, 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 the feels, the feelings that led the land to go so seriously and so profoundly, so deeply into his studies. Because it simply wasn't enough to say, oh, no, this is psychological. Yes, but why? Why would it be? Or why would it not be? Oh, this is a, a mediumistic event. So why is it? Or why is it not? So it's not just enough. So looking really closely, as Einstein said, to find something that's deeply hidden, but it's there. He knew it was there. Yeah. And so the second part, so the first part was to, you know, to pose the, 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 the framework, the, the, the background where he was going to work. The second one, the second part is where he brings all the theories, all his contemporaries' theories to prove or disprove each one. So again, it's, it's a very um, uh, involved chapter part of the book in which he's going to study animism. He's going to study and decide and define what is a true or a false medium. Um, he's going to resort to go back to the to the spiritist teachings, especially the mediums book. So he goes back to the source and comes back to prove or disprove it. Um, he studies in details physically the, 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 the physiology of the uh, automatic writing or the mechanic writing. He talks about latent memory. What is it and why, why it isn't the, the, the case with mediums or how it could be at the stage of development you see it's not just black and white it's got all these stages to to get to to his conclusion sonambulism as well as as a state how it works why it works and how can you say that a medium is in any state related to sonambulism as they used to say He also goes into the uh, he, into the contribution of other senses like premonition, telepathy, clairvoyance, uh, um, all the sensory skills, um, 
how they interact and how they merge together in in a medium's work because you notice then in this research that this body of work that it wasn't just a matter which was a matter of writing but it was pretty much the in many cases the writing was also associated with other um, skills of other abilities in this that comes from what they call the very intricate physiology of a medium. Um, was like, talk, it's not the person's just writing, but he could see who was writing. So it was a medium letting his arm at the service of writing, but he could see the mentor or he could um, be apart from his body and describe what the spirit was, do, was doing. Or he could uh, have information by telepathy or, or knowing it or hearing it. Because it, 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 it happens that in so many cases, sometimes you can know it in your head or you can hear it in your head or you can see it, you can, uh, the medium can be inspired. All these nuances uh, uh, were taken very bravely, so he did not want to avoid or skip anything. So he, he says, well, if my contemporaries were afraid of addressing some issues, I want to go to see each and every one of them in depth before I come to a conclusion. Yeah. And um, so in the part two, so in this part two, he says, mediumship has special characteristics that do not allow it to be mistaken for sheer automatism. The automatic writing is unconscious. The writing in mental, in mental health patients is not spontaneous. The true mediumistic writing requires mental control, the use of muscular control and sensations, um, action upon acting upon the nervous system and mechanisms. So that writing occurs to answer questions, for example, whether or not the medium is aware of those questions. It's not important that the medium knows the questions. And in my experience, I would say many times I would uh, rather I didn't know. Because that, it was the, the receiver's reaction would tell me, would reassure me that what I was doing was genuine and, and uh, honest, of course, but it was genuine. So if people had a question, I would take down the, the writing, the answer. But I said, don't tell me the question. Tell me if that answers your question. And it's... It's a brave. I'm sorry, but I, I'm not blowing my own trumpet. But I, I, because it's a, it's a, it's a brave thing. It takes guts to, to do that. <laughs> because when you put yourself, putting oneself to test, it's not easy. It's not easy. It's uh, uh, risking hearing that that all the whole thing is flawed that perhaps I'm not being exactly what I think I'm doing, what I, th what I think I am, you know. But sometimes you have to take the risk. You, you have to, if you want to do an honest investigation, you have to. That's the only way and that's what he did. And I was really glad to hear that, very glad. <laughs> so, 
Moving on, so this, uh, in his uh, conclusion, part three is, is all about his conclusions. Um, when he has, he says there are multiple proof of communication from the spirits through mechanical writing. He talks about the characteristics, the characteristics of writing and how the, the skills are developed how the mediums learn to write just as, as one learns to write at school at the primary school learning the first letters the first signs the first lights the first loops um, many mediums are taught like that because they have to learn it's learn to control or uncontrol <laughs> or not control the um i have to keep moving this mouse otherwise um until they're able to scribble a few lines and uh, write connected have developed connected writing and texts so it does start like that only the teacher is working from a different level from a different dimension. And um, his work um, describes how that works, how that develops. Okay. And I think that's pretty much it. So he says, well, something's changed, but anyway, <laughs> uh, it was meant to be connected, okay? So, uh, now that's all right. I think the next one, uh, my my charts change, but anyway, it doesn't matter. What he's saying is that so you've got as as a group terrestrial humanity, not to, to not to use a spiritist word as for incarnated uh, humanity, and there is a posthumous humanity, as he said. Not to use the spiritist word discarnate. <laughs> yeah? So it's a scientific research, not a spiritist scientific research. He wanted to be very careful uh, like that. So, so his choice of words was careful. So uh, and now I can't read it. It says, so there is a material organization, the medium's own spirit, so there are the three factors, and independent spiritual intervention. So again, the phenomena is based in these three factors, the material aspect of it, the medium's own spirit, and someone else, and the spiritual intervention, which is independent from the medium. And that's incredibly important. So it's not as if he splits personality or remembers uh, something from a past, even a past life. Now, now, there are two people, if you will, two people working together. Is an interdimensional connection and collaboration for a grandiose purpose. So, and it says, mediumship is not a supernatural faculty, it depends on physiology and the nervous system. It is better manifested in good health, not exclusively, but better, because there is a physical a demand on, uh, on energy and, and sort of fitness. And it's not related to concepts of morality or ethical choices either. So it doesn't take it, it's not because the person is... Um, it's better, better be, but uh, 
morally um, advanced and, and uh, has the highest um, ethical choices. That none of these in themselves will make a medium work to do quality, high quality work. Yeah. And he says, because mediumship in principle is organic, what is done about it is a different story. And that comes, that then comes the ethical aspect of responsibility, which then goes into the spiritism and the spiritist teachings. Yeah. But that, that is, um, that's what, that's his take on it. That's his conclusion. Now, Go and read the book to find more <laughs> about it. And finally, it says, again, Professor Brown Cox had um, very rightly in my opinion, there are still great mysteries and it's appropriate to think about what it means to be human. That's fine. The problem comes when your religion or philosophy forced you to deny some facts and measurements. But um, Delan said that. In, in his studies, he, said, he felt, he found that many of the, the theories um, derived from the fact that the researchers are trying to avoid some some of the facts and measurements right in front of them but because it probably didn't give them the right answer or the answers that they were looking for the answers of their faith or their belief or their hopes were looking for and it says no if you're doing the scientific work and the research and honest, straightforward work, you've got to see things for what they are. And what the land says, adding to this, is that he was sure, and, and the reason what it was the compelling thing for him to, to move on into this um, painstaking study was that he was sure that the spiritism would take whatever conclusion that was proven right and would incorporate it because the principle from Kardec is that spiritists study. And they study and they look for the truth and they face it. Don't we talk about epigenetics today? Yeah, that wasn't something in his time. But is anyone going to deny epigenetics today? <laughs> no, it's an evolution of everything that's already in the, in the master's books. And I think that's my take in this. Uh, uh, his conclusion was beautiful. He says, the, um, the absolute certainty of mediumship in communication says, after the death of their physical body, a spirit can still communicate thoughts to these delicately constituted beings, which are the mediums. This is a magnificent discovery that opens doors to a new world. And um, the lack of some specific knowledge may delay the process of reaching positive results. As much as switching the lights on in a dark room would impede the processing of a photograph. Well, if I wanted to learn how to do a how to develop a photograph in a dark room, the first thing you need to know. <laughs> 
is that you just you just switch lights on. Yeah. But that that is specific knowledge. So you can't if you want to develop some basic, some minimum um, requirements have to be uh, uh, observed. And uh, the development of photography, for example, is a very good example of that. How can you do that? Well, as you develop the means of observation, um, so so we develop the procedures. Yeah, I think that's. I don't know if there is another one. Yeah. Um. I'll take the the. the the previous studies were limited to making superficial analogies, taking into account only the psychophysiological aspects of writing, um, and therefore based their conclusions on incomplete observations, like like I said, only the hysteric patients or uh, um, who were influenced by the observer. So that's it can't be scientific like that. And these spontaneous cases of mediumistic writing were not observed, which did not comply with scientific standards in the 1900s, and as a consequence, caused a delay in understanding the phenomena. Again, the methodology must be has to be sound. Yeah, it has to be uh, impartial. And next one, please. And finally, he says, the human soul is splendidly, splendidly manifested in the phenomena of clairvoyance, transmission of thoughts and telepathy, which show that man contains an intelligence which escapes in part the laws of space and time which govern inert matter. Physiology, psychology, and physics are, are interested in the problems that the new faculties of the human being and the psychic communications between the living race. And finally, I think is the last one, under the irresistible impulse of these new ideas that the spirit is press has sown for 50 years all over the world, 50 from in his time. We see the block of prejudices and errors crumbling. Many are the great intelligences which have already communicated with the invisible to imagine that their voices may not be muffled. And soon the certainty of immortality will shine brightly like a great beacon to illuminate the evolutionary march of humanity. I think that's brilliant and that's that's how he closes his conclusion. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much, <laughs> You can you see how rich the book is, how packed with information and uh, the brilliant work again that Delan has done. He usually he's very scientific in the way that he does. He um, I think he didn't do all the experiments. What he does is what we call literature review, and he's very good at that. He goes and you know studies all that there is there and see through them and then bring all this information in his very beautiful work we had we have some comments here elsa hello elsa good to hello. have you here with us nice to you we have uh rosa maria according to kardec there is usually a combination of animism and mediumship during the communication 
between the spiritual and material world. That's quite interesting. Yes, there is. We are not an empty machine. We have our history and, of course, the spirits use, you know, us as an instrument. We are not an empty. It's like a computer without an operating system. We have our operating system. And whatever software we install on the computer, we have the... Um, we have the operating system to, you know, running behind that. You know. Thanks, uh, Rosa Marie. Saul Waters, our dear friend. Saul, hello, Saul. Thank you very much. Thank you, Saul. We have another comment from Rosa Maria. Even in mechanical writing, there's a cooperation of the medium concerning his energy and the will to work uh, as an instrument, including his mental archives that can be accessed by the spirit who wants to communicate. Yeah, that's what we just commented. Thank you, Rosa Maria. Very active participation. <laughs> and so again, oh, sorry, I've gone back. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> And Marco Davis, um, wonderful book uh, called after the, um, that's called After Death. Just had it in French, but I have had one translated for uh, Esperanto. You know, just love it. And wonderful. yeah, that's good. Yeah. So, Faye, um, oh. Ask you if you have a final comments to make before we go to the announcements. Yes, um, I would. Uh, do, you, do you mind? I think uh, I don't know if the the uh, oh, the, if the slides are still there. I don't know. Yes, they are. It's all right. Back, yeah. There is one with the mother and child, and the uh, um, after this one. Um, that would be, I think it's slide number 29. 29, okay, yeah. Yes. Okay. Did I say, well, is this Mother's Day? So. Uh, oh, wow, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this is a, a mediumistic painting done with fingertips. You see, look. It's beyond the, the, the person's ability to do the drawing. But there's an expression, there's standardness. And um, if you show me the, the next one, please. Yes. That's a child. Wow, In the tiny, tiny, delicate details that's done with the fingertip. Well, you know, to me, who is that, the author of that? Sorry, who is the author of that? I don't know. He, he, he didn't sign. He didn't. Okay. Sign. I thought it was Rockwell, but I'm not sure. I'm not Beautiful. Sure. Yeah. yeah, but you see the the, the detail on the eye, the nose. Yeah. Okay. You know, yeah. this is uh, uh, an incredible. Uh, result yeah. of uh, beauty and delicacy in something that's done so quickly, so roughly. Yeah. I think, Very uh, interesting. Thank you so much for point. bringing this and sharing with us. Thank you. Ooh, thank you. Thank you very much, Faye. Let's go to our announcement now. So next month, on the 4th of June, we have here with us our dear friend, Dr. Vanessa Celoni. She will be talking about the nun's work, The Evolution of the Soul. So same time, 7 p.m. UK time, 4th of June, again a Sunday. We will have the episode number six of this series about Gabriel Delan and his work. Uh, just a quick reminder, we have uh, a study group online every Wednesday, 12 noon, London time. 
offered by the Spiritist Center for Peace. So everyone can join at the moment. The group is studying heaven and hell and the gospel according to Spiritism. So if you have, you know, some time available on Wednesdays around lunchtime, please join the study. Also, we also have the uh, study of the mediums book online. And this is uh, on Saturdays, 10.30 a.m. UK time. It's um, a book, um, you know, very, very interesting book. And we do the study with the participation of everyone who is in the, the room. And the three coordinating the study, but not lecturing, just coordinating the study, are uh, Guilherme Diaz, Charles Kent, and myself. And finally, we want to thank Kardec Radio for allowing us to use their studio and making this broadcast possible. So thank our uh, heartfelt thank to all of them. So that's what we had for today. Hope you enjoyed and hope to see you all in a month's time, a bit less this time, in three weeks. So on the 4th of June for another episode of the series um, Gabriel Delon in his work. Thank you very much. Thank you, Faye. Great Thank pleasure you to much. have you here. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks. Okay, bye-bye.